You want to learn how to create your own custom character for Unreal so you can replace the UE4 mannequin, then you clicked on the right video. In this video, we cover the basic process of creating your own custom UE4 character. Whether you want to create a complex, highly realistic humanoid monster or just a simple Roblox-like character, the steps covered in this video will always be necessary. So let's break down the required components for a character in Unreal. The first component of a character is a skeleton. This is used to animate the character and can later also be used for attaching additions to your character, such as clothing and weapons. For example, you can attach a head to your character's head bone. The second component for a character is a mesh. You can look at the mesh as a collection of vertices, edges, faces, which combine to find the shape of a polyhedral object. In simple terms, this is the 3D model that makes up your creation, whether that is a character or a complex 3D robot. For the purpose of this video, we stuck to a very basic Minecraft looking character. And the Blender workflow for creating a character is that you start out by creating your mesh, after which you add bones, which together forms your rigged character, allowing you control over the mesh. A skeleton and a mesh combined is what Unreal calls a skeletal mesh, which in turn is used inside the engine to display complex animation data. Leading to our next and third component, animations. These are required for making your skeletal mesh, aka character, animated. To keep this video short and simple, we stuck to creating two animations, idle and running. And last but not least, physics. Physics are used for collision and are automatically generated upon importing your character in Unreal after having followed the correct character creation flow in Blender. If you're interested in creating your own entire character from scratch like we did, then check out our video on Blender character creation, link down below and seen here. Then moving on to the programming side of things. The required components here for our character are 1. A character blueprint. A character blueprint is a type of pawn that includes the ability to walk around. This blueprint class automatically comes with a character movement component, which can be tweaked to one's own custom needs and includes the abilities to walk, fly, jump and swim. You get a character blueprint by right-clicking in the content window and selecting character. To make your custom character move, you can simply copy the third person's character gameplay code and reference inputs. A more simple way of doing this is by simply copy-pasting the third person character blueprint and then switching out the mannequin with your own mesh. From this point you can tweak the character's movement components and add gameplay code according to your needs. Then we also need what is called an animation blueprint to set up animation logic. Inside the animation blueprint we can define when specific animations get called. To create an animation blueprint simply right click the content folder, navigate to animation and select the animation blueprint. And then make sure to select your skeleton and give your blueprint a name. Inside of my event graph, I determine the speed of my character based off of our character's velocity and use this velocity to set my speed variable. Since I only use two walking type animations, this is the only variable that I require to determine which animation to play. We then open up our anim graph in which we create a state machine, which is used for determining the animation state of our character based on conditions. Like I mentioned before, my only variable currently is speed. What I could do now is create multiple states and use conditions to toggle between different animations. That would look something like this. First, I create my idle state, and then I create my running state, which, as you can see, automatically generates a transition condition. So we want to go from idle to running and back from running to idle. Then inside of your transition rule, you can determine whether you are idling or running or running or idling. So if we open up our first transition rule, this is the rule to go from idle to running we see that we can enter a boolean. So what we need to do is create a variable and call it is running, which later on we will set. So if we are running, then that means that we switch from idle to running. And then on the backwards transition rule, 
we will also use the is running variable and we will say is not which you get by typing not so we will say is not running and if we are not running that means that we are going from running back to idle now you have to open up your idle state inside here you connect your idle animation if you hit compile you will see that it starts working back to default into the running state here we connect our running state animation if we hit compile and save you can see that it starts to work and now all we need to do is go back into the event graph and actually set this variable so to do that we can get our character speed and we can make sure that our character speed is not equal to zero let's connect this branch up if our character speed is not zero that means we are running so we set our running variable to true and if it is zero that means we are not running if we compile and save we can test this out and that's what it looks like guys now this example is typically how you would switch between states for instance you could use booleans to determine whether or not your character is falling based on its downwards velocity and then trigger a falling animation as you can see, this setup results in the animations instantly snapping from one to the other, which is good in some cases, but not for walking type animations. Another option, which is what I chose for this example, is that I make a use of a blend space 1D. Blend spaces have inputs that take values from variables and can be used to easily, as the name suggests, blend between animations. To create a blend space 1D, you simply right click the content folder and select animation, blend space 1d and then make sure to select your skeleton you then type the name of your variable and give it a maximum and minimum value since we use the basic gameplay logic from the third person character we can look at the character movement component to determine what our max walk speed is you can then simply drag in your animations from the asset browser panel onto the correct speed value for your animation hold shift and move your mouse to then preview your animations now all that's left to do is to open up your animation blueprint, head over to your animation graph, create a state machine, simply call it whatever you'd like, the default state machine for instance. Open that up, add one single state instead of multiple states and call this one idle slash running. Open your state up, then get your blend space 1D into your state by simply dragging it Connect your output pose and connect your speed variable into your blend space 1D so that your blend space 1D can use this to determine what animations to blend between. Now the only thing that's left to do is to add your animation blueprint to your character blueprint. So let's open this up, add to our viewport, select our mesh and then here on the right in animation you can select your animation blueprint and as you see the character is now moving. We hit compile and save. That's it guys, we've now set up our own custom character in Unreal using an animation blueprint which uses an animation blend space. Hi guys, hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, then please consider to give us a like and perhaps subscribe. <laughs> Uh, if you still have a suggestion or a question, then make sure to comment down below. Like we said, be sure to check out this Blender tutorial for character creation and this Blender tutorial for scaling in Blender so that you have a correct scaling workflow when it comes from Blender to Unreal. That's it for now guys, see you in the next video.